This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and somebody who's been covering Avatar. And now I'm just starting to cover Megan. I was interested in Megan. I haven't done any other videos about it because I do like horror and I love high concept. And the high concept of Megan, this AI doll, which is of course similar to the concept of Chucky, going all the way back to uh, evil mannequins or whatnot. Dolls are pretty fascinating because they're kind of weird. But Megan actually beat Avatar on Friday night. Which is really a big deal because, you know, of course, Avatar is a huge, huge movie with tremendous, tremendous promotion and a huge production budget. Megan's production budget was only $12 million. Avatar's production budget was in the several hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, estimated up to $400 million, $450 million. Now, this doesn't mean that um, Megan is going to do you know, $2 billion in uh, business. But it is interesting because a lot of people thought that Megan was gonna be in a lot of trouble coming out while Avatar 2 is still running fairly strong. Avatar 2 is up to a worldwide box office of $1.558 billion, which is a heck of a lot of money. But it has slowed down a little bit this week. It, it did another 100 million plus this past week. That is very significant business, very good for James Cameron. And there's no question they're gonna have, you know, additional Avatar sequels. It's considered a strong success, and it should be. But Megan did pretty good. You know, her first release date was Friday, January 6th. 11,710,000, 11,406,000. Now, another interesting thing about Megan is, you know, if you look at where Avatar is uh, being released, look at all these countries. It's like everywhere in the world, right? Even China. Megan doesn't have a big international box office gross, but a lot of times that's because they release different international markets in different periods of time. So if you look at Megan, so far she's only in the Czech Republic, France, and Mexico. I don't have release dates for other international markets. I doubt very much it's going into China, but you know, you're gonna see the UK, Germany, Australia, you know, plenty of other serious and major markets for it to do additional business. This movie was also made by Blumhouse, which is known for franchise horror, and uh, James Wan uh, co-produced it, who is an amazing director. He actually directed Aquaman, but also Insidious. He did Insidious on a budget of $1.5 million and created a huge, huge horror franchise with it. I saw Insidious again recently because I've been looking just harder at these horror films and these high concept horror films and really finding them incredibly interesting. It really started to get my interest and I could really see getting into some of that. I'll keep you guys posted if I get serious about that. Really, really, truly amazing. Let's get into this article from MovieWeb talking about Megan becoming a big box office draw with impressive first weekend. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. The killer robotic doll Megan has cemented itself as a cult phenomenon with the film drowning in over $11.7 million on the first Friday for the weekend. Megan was released in theaters nationwide on January 6th and grossed over $11.7 million in box office sale. According to a recent report from Variety, Megan is projected to take in somewhere between $17 million to $20 million by the end of its opening weekend. While Avatar The Way of Water is expected to hold on to its top spot, Megan is currently fast on its heels. And so far, as far as like Friday alone goes, Megan's doing better. And again, Avatar is in like what, 20 foreign countries or more? Uh, and Megan is in three. The film has already done better than projected as the project is already expected to succeed in making more than the $12 million it costs to produce. That's kind of a term of art when they talk about well, look, it's almost done $12 million and it had a $12 million budget. Well, the uh, studios don't get to keep all of the money that the movie grosses. They get a percentage. And domestic, it's usually 50%. International, it's usually 40%. Except for China, it's 25%. But still, um, you know, it's referred to in that way. So worldwide, it's done $15 million so far, Megan. But that's just for Friday. So this could, who knows? I'm very interested to see what happens with this movie. If you've been living under a rock and don't know what Megan is about, allow us to fill you in. Megan is a life-size robotic doll designed by state-of-the-art toy company headed by its designer, Gemma. Megan serves as a best friend and confidant to a little girl named Katie, who is recently orphaned and living under the care of her Aunt Gemma. Megan is initially everything a guardian could hope for. She's attentive, playful, and protective over her ward. Then one day, things take a drastic turn for the worse when Gemma makes the unfathomable decision to link her Megan prototype with Katie so that she can devote more time to her work as a roboticist. Megan then becomes unmanageable and destroys anyone she perceives as a threat to herself and Katie. Yeah, you don't want to take, take this from me, you do not want to take your robot dolls and then pair them that closely to your children because this 
obviously could happen. It's not good. And let me know, by the way, please, in the comments below, have you paired any of your robotic artificial intelligence dolls to any of your children or any of your friends? Have you had similar problems that they have in Megan? Megan was directed by Gerard Johnstone and stars Allison Williams as Gemma, Brian Jordan Alvarez as Cole, Ronnie Ching as David Lin, and Violet McCraw as Caddy. Megan gets to know the two stars who play the killer doll. It takes two actors to be Megan. Megan is already one of the most talked about films of 2023 and is expected to be a huge box office draw. Audiences by now are familiar with the film's main cast, but who are the actresses that have made Megan come to life? Their actresses Amy Donald and Jenna Davis. While Jenna provides that eerie voice audiences have come to recognize as a symbol of horror, Amy Donald provides the physical performance thanks to digital visual effects and prosthetics. Amy is also an accomplished dancer with many awards and credits to her name. Jenna Davis is an 18-year-old American actress born in Plano, Texas. Pretty interesting. Let me know in the comments below if you plan on seeing Megan or not. I'd definitely love to see what you have to say. Now, also, I have been saying that um, this, this situation with Disney deciding to fight with the governor of Florida over the parental rights bill was absolutely ridiculous and can't be fixed now. And DeSantis has now come out with his plan, uh, his plan to sever the control of Disney Reedy Creek District. And basically the plan is this, they're going to have a state sponsored board because apparently there are political enemies in Orange County that run Orange County and they want to try to get the taxpayers in Orange County forced to pay $700 million in debt that Disney has. DeSantis has a plan where he's basically going to say, hey, look, Disney's going to be forced to pay this $700 million and they're not going to get away with not paying the debt. Also, it's going to be a state appointed board that's going to control the county so they, they take control away from Orange County, which could mess around and create problems. It's really funny that they have to battle like this, but this self-governing district, Reedy Creek District that was lost by Bob Chapek, really is a financial disaster. And that $700 million of debt that Disney's going to wind up having to pay, that $700 million is nothing compared to what this is going to cost them in dealing with Florida. DeSantis has also done a fairly strong job as governor in, in as much as he seems to be unstoppable as governor unless he runs for president and leaves Florida and then someone else less popular becomes governor. I don't know what might happen, but it looks like Disney is not going to have any change in government in Florida to help them for a long time. So a really, really unfortunate move by Bob Chapek costing Disney what I estimate to be at least $5 billion, if not more in damages. I mean, just it's just a tremendously terrible thing. Now we all know that HBO Max canceled series. We know that Warner Brothers Discovery canceled movies and series. And this is one of the things that's been talked about is like, look, they have a lot of series. They have a lot of content. There was an HBO Max series called Generation. What's Generation about? Generation followed a group of high school students whose exploration of modern sexuality tests deeply entrenched beliefs about life, love, and the nature of family in their conservative community. The cast of the series included Justice Smith and a bunch of other people. So this was something that HBO Max, for what HBO Max is, for their platform, it's a very specific platform. They didn't want to continue the series. It wasn't a right fit for them in terms of where they want to go with HBO Max. In addition to, it wasn't generating enough views to justify the cost of production. Tubi is another platform. Fox has a big stake in Tubi, uh, and it's like Pluto, same kind of thing. It's a free advertising supported television network that's distributed on apps. It has advertising in it. Tubi was interested in picking up the series. So they pick up the series and the show moves there. And this is what's supposed to happen with content. You know, if it's not a good fit for their vision of what they want to do with HBO Max. They don't have their own free streaming service right now at uh, Warner Brothers Discovery just yet. Uh, but even if they did, they don't want this kind of content for that. Apparently, they'd rather just license it or just let it go to Tubi. It's just not a good fit. So that's a very like sensible thing for them to do. All right, well, let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Do you agree? Like if there's a series that HBO Max doesn't want, let them just license it to Tubi. Do you also agree that Bob Chapek really blew it in fighting with the governor? I thought it was ridiculous and I wasn't surprised that something terrible would happen. I didn't know it would even be this bad. And let me know if you're surprised also about Megan's success and if you plan on seeing Megan. I did not expect, you know, last weekend I was talking about how wrong I was about Avatar because I thought Avatar, would, you know, at most would do like 1.4 billion. It's already done 1.5 billion. I'm wrong about that. But if it's only going to average 100 million a week, 
and it's going to continue to weaken out a little bit, it may do 2 billion, it may not do 2 billion. So maybe I'm not even that wrong at the end of the day. You know, if it does 1.8 billion, for example, I'd be kind of on target. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.